The fighter pilot's gloved hand hovers over the touchscreen. Four contacts materialize on the tactical display, not enemy aircraft, but something unprecedented. His wingmen, except they're not human. They're autonomous combat aircraft, each carrying enough ordnance to level a city block powered by artificial intelligence, trained on millions of simulated dogfights, and operating with a single directive, protect the pilot, accomplish the mission, survive if possible. This isn't science fiction, it's happening right now, 35,000 feet above the Mojave Desert, where the future of air warfare just went operational. 1432 hours, Edwards Air Force Base, California. August 28, 2025. The strategic calculus is brutal. China fields over 200 J-20 stealth fighters with loyal wingman drones entering production. Russia's Okotnik unmanned combat aircraft flies alongside Su-57S. Meanwhile, America's F-35 and F-22. Fleet's magnificent aircraft, costing 80 to 150 million dollars, each face a mathematical problem that technology alone can't solve. There aren't enough of them. When adversaries can field numerical superiority through cheaper platforms, even the world's most advanced fighters face overwhelming odds. The solution isn't building more expensive jets. It's fundamentally reimagining what a fighter squadron looks like. Enter the Collaborative Combat Aircraft Initiative, a $30 billion program to deploy 1,000 autonomous combat drones by the early 2030s. These aren't reconnaissance platforms or training aids. They're designated YFQ-42A and YFQ-44A, the F signifying fighter, the first time in history unmanned aircraft received that classification. They carry missiles, bombs, electronic warfare payloads, and sensors that extend a pilot's awareness by hundreds of miles. Most critically, they're attritable. Each costs $25 million, one-third the price of an F-35, specifically engineered to be risked in combat scenarios where losing a human pilot is unacceptable. The development story begins in 2022 when Air Force Secretary Frank Kendall designated collaborative combat aircraft as an operational imperative. The Pentagon issued what amounted to a challenge. Build autonomous combat aircraft that can team with fifth and sixth generation fighters, operate in contested airspace against peer adversaries, and do it for a fraction of traditional costs. Over 20 companies competed. General Atomics, legendary for Predator and Reaper drones, proposed leveraging decades of unmanned systems experience. Anduril Industries, a tech disruptor known for AI-driven defense solutions, acquired Blue Force Technologies and adapted their Fury drone platform. Boeing offered the MQ-28 Ghost Bat, already flying in Australia. Lockheed Martin and Northrop Grumman submitted classified designs drawing on stealth and autonomy research. By April 20, 24, the Air Force selected two winners, General Atomics and Anduril, awarding contracts to build flying prototypes designated Increment 1. General Atomics based their YFQ-42A on the XQ-67 offboard sensing station, emphasizing endurance and modularity. The aircraft features a jet-powered design with internal weapons bay, low observable shaping, and ruggedized landing gear for austere field operations. Ground testing began May 20, 25. First flight followed in August, less than 18 months from contract award to wheels up, a timeline that would make traditional acquisition programs weep with envy. Andural's YFQ-44A represents the newcomer's approach, sleeker, faster, driven by Lattice AI software that turns autonomous flight from programmed responses into adaptive decision-making. Their prototype entered ground tests mid-2025, with flight testing anticipated by year's end. Both contractors are building not just aircraft, but entire ecosystems, mission software, maintenance procedures, training programs, everything needed to integrate autonomous wingmen into operational squadrons. Picture the scenario. South China Sea, 2032. Four F-47, NGAD, sixth-generation fighters launch from Anderson Air Force Base, Guam. Each commands three collaborative combat aircraft, 12 autonomous drones spreading across 900 nautical miles of contested airspace. 
The mission, suppress integrated air defenses protecting a disputed island where Chinese J-20 stealth fighters patrol above S-400. Missile batteries that can engage targets at 125 miles. At 600 miles out, the NGADs release their CCAs. The autonomous aircraft accelerate ahead, using onboard AI to coordinate without radio communication that might reveal their position. Infrared sensors sweep for threats. One CCA detects radar emissions and SA-21. Growler system in active tracking mode. The drone doesn't request permission from its controlling pilot. Algorithms trained on thousands of threat scenarios recognize the signature, calculate probability of detection, and execute. An AGM-88 anti-radiation missile leaves the rail at Mach 3. Eight seconds later, the radar goes dark. Chinese J-20 fighters vector toward the disturbance, their pilots confident in numerical superiority. They're tracking what appears to be four contacts, unaware that 12 additional aircraft are operating 200 miles behind the initial wave. Radar cross-sections barely larger than birds. The F-47S, invisible to everything except the most sophisticated early warning radars, have already locked weapons. AIM 120D, AMRAM, missiles streak from internal bays at beyond visual range. The Chinese pilots never see their attackers. Their mechanically scanned radars are still sweeping empty sky when kinetic death arrives at four times the speed of sound. Simultaneously, CCAs, equipped for electronic warfare, flood Chinese data links with jamming signals. Surface-to-air missile batteries receive conflicting targeting data. Autonomous drones mimicking fighter radar signatures present dozens of false contacts, saturating the integrated air defense network with targets that don't exist. When the actual F-47S launch JASM stealth cruise missiles against command nodes, the Chinese can't distinguish real threats from electronic phantoms until warheads detonate among hardened bunkers. The climax comes when Chinese reinforcements a dozen J-35 carrier-based fighters scramble from a strike group 300 miles east. Standard doctrine would require American fighters to break engagement and defend against the new threat. Instead, the NGAD mission commander reassigns half his CCAs with a gesture on his cockpit display. Six autonomous aircraft peel away at supersonic speed, forming a defensive screen that intercepts the J-35S before they reach weapons range. The drone's AI coordinates intercepts with millisecond precision, launching missiles in coordinated salvos that overwhelm individual targets. Three J-35S are destroyed before their pilots comprehend their fighting unmanned opponents. In 12 minutes, the engagement is over. The Chinese air defense network is shattered. Enemy fighters are scattered or destroyed. Most significantly, all four American pilots return safely to base. Their autonomous wingmen having absorbed the risks that would traditionally require manned aircraft in harm's way. The aftermath reverberates through defense ministries worldwide. NATO planners recognize that Norwegian F-35S can now team with Italian CCAs to create integrated networks spanning European airspace. Pacific allies realize distributed operations become viable when autonomous aircraft can be forward deployed without risking pilots in the opening hours of conflict. China accelerates its own loyal wingman programs, but faces the reality that American software-driven architectures can evolve faster than hardware-locked platforms. Behind every CCA stands an industrial ecosystem employing thousands. At General Atomics Poway facility, approximately 3,000 engineers and technicians work around the clock. Composite material specialists craft radar absorbent structures using precision layup techniques developed over three decades of unmanned systems production. Software developers write millions of lines of code governing autonomous behaviors, how a drone decides whether to break formation, when to go defensive, how to prioritize targets when communications are jammed. Flight test engineers at Edwards and Nellis refine tactics that will keep future air crews alive. Anduril's new manufacturing facility in Ohio represents the defense industrial base's transformation. Instead of traditional aerospace assembly lines requiring years to scale, the company uses digital engineering and automated production 
inspired by commercial aviation. Platform agnostic tooling means the same equipment builds Increment 1 drones today and Increment 2 variants tomorrow. Modular design allows mission payloads to be swapped in hours rather than days, enabling a single aircraft to conduct reconnaissance Monday, electronic warfare Tuesday, and strike missions Wednesday. Pratt & Whitney supplies compact turbofan engines optimized for unmanned endurance. Northrop Grumman provides advanced sensors using gallium nitride active electronically scanned arrays. Raytheon integrates weapon systems, ensuring CCAs can employ the same ordnance as manned fighters. The supply chain spans 48 states and employs over 80,000 workers directly, with hundreds of thousands more in supporting industries. This isn't just about building drones. It's about maintaining the technological and industrial infrastructure that keeps America competitive when peer adversaries are building faster. The Collaborative Combat Aircraft Program represents something profound. The recognition that air superiority in the 21st century depends not just on platform performance, but on the ability to present adversaries with complexity they cannot counter. When one pilot commands five autonomous aircraft, each performing different roles simultaneously, the enemy faces a distributed, resilient network rather than vulnerable individual targets. Shooting down one CCA doesn't stop the mission. It merely removes one node from a system designed to function despite attrition. Perhaps most critically, CCAs address the political and moral dimensions of warfare. Democracies hesitate to commit forces when casualties seem inevitable. Authoritarian regimes exploit this reluctance, believing Western nations lack resolve for sustained conflict. Autonomous combat aircraft change that equation. America can project devastating air power while minimizing risk to pilots, demonstrating both capability and willingness to use force when core interests are threatened. The deterrent effect is profound. Adversaries can no longer calculate that the United States will flinch from contested airspace because losing pilots is politically unacceptable. The Ghost Squadron is rising. By 2029, the Air Force projects over 100 CCAs operational. By the mid-2030s, that number could reach 1,000 or more a force multiplier that transforms how America fights and deters wars. The question isn't whether autonomous combat aircraft represent the future. That debate ended the moment YFQ-42A lifted off in August 2025. The question is whether America maintains the lead in a domain where software, artificial intelligence, and industrial agility matter as much as stealth and speed. So here's what I want to know. If you were advising the Pentagon on the next phase, would you prioritize quantity building as many affordable CCAs as possible or capability? Developing smaller numbers of more advanced autonomous fighters? Where does the strategic advantage actually lie when adversaries are racing to match our technology? This is DIB Dispatch, where billion-dollar projects meet battlefield reality. And the future of American air power takes shape in the hands of engineers and operators most people will never see.